Stanford on the air. Respond to apparatus, 19 June Street, 19 June Street. Reported, fire in a building. Engine 4 is responding, 19 June Street for the building fire. Engine 4, I have you respond in 19 June Street, building fire. Uh, bystanders on scene, report, homeowner went back into the building. He is no longer anywhere to be found. Something that could be taken as being surprising to your normal citizen is exactly the type of environments and calls that we have to deal with. Anything that you can come up with that you would never want to have happen on your worst day, we've probably seen it, we've probably been through it, and we've probably handled it and watched other people go through it. You know, TV definitely portrays it as glorious and you can see everything, Chicago Fire, all that, you know, backdraft, you go in there and you can see everything in front of you, what you're doing, it's not like that at all. I think one of the calls that bothered me the most was a medical call. Um, and again, that was over in Lebanon. That was a gentleman that uh, had his arm caught in a machine in a conveyor belt, and it literally ripped his arm off. Um, and that was probably the one call that affected me from a uh, traumatic stress side of it. It bothered me days later. Um, and I did seek treatment for that. What was it? It was a full-size pickup truck versus a Jeep. And um, due to high rates of speed, they end up at, when the police reconstructed the accident, they determined the gentleman in the pickup was doing over 90 miles an hour and hit a, um, a Jeep that was doing about 55. And just the amount of destruction at the time, my captain on the truck with me, he just retired after 44 years on the job here. And he said that was the most destruction he's ever seen in one accident. Some people deal well with that. Um, they find ways to cope with it. Other people don't. I mean, right now there's a very high uh, rate of suicide in the fire service across the country. And we never thought we'd even think about that, but it's one of these things where people, um, like other people in other professions, um, get to a point where they can't cope anymore. And firefighters tend to be strong-willed people, and we don't always reach out for help. Well, the most memorable was probably my very first call in the fire service, and uh, it was a uh, a little girl that hit, got hit on a bicycle, and when I got to the scene, it was my best friend's little girl. So that was probably my most memorable one. It was the first call I ever went on. It was, you don't forget that. So, in order to get over that, you've got to find a way to vent. You have to have an outlet. One way that fire department uh, members have that venting and outlet is through humor. Uh, sometimes the humor is not so politically correct. Uh, sometimes it's more of a darker tone but it's what we need to joke about. It's what we need to do in order to get out of our heads all the things that we've seen, that we've done. And you can do it with a group of people that know exactly what you're talking about and that will find the humor in it because of the outlandish things that we've had to see and experience. Shift here made a video back in 2008. It's the thing of legend. One morning, it was Saturday, it was early, we got some stuff done here. TV was on a random station. It was a hunting show. I had never seen a hunting show before, and I was just baffled by how hunting shows are run. Everyone's all sneaking up, they're all whispering how it works. So we made a video of our own, or we hunted the Northeastern Paramedic here in the fire station. If you look right here, we've got an ambulance, and over here, another ambulance. There's definitely going to be some paramedics around here, I can tell. Just as I suspected. This is an older, wiser paramedic. Suffering from what we like to call burnout. Oh, I've got you, you son of a bitch. Got him! Got him! Yes! Oh, oh, yeah. How we want them to perceive us is we're professional. We're professional when we need to be. And, but we also are human beings too. And, you know, sometimes around the station we're not professional. So it all depends. It's, it's tough. <laughs> how, would we, how would I describe the relationship with my brother, with my, well, I just said it there, right there, I guess. Um, my brother firefighters, we, uh, for the most part, we, uh, we get along really good. Um, we're like a family, sometimes dysfunctional at times, but, um, Whenever someone is, is down, they have a problem, they're out of work or whatever, um, we always check up on them, they check up on us. And um, 
we when we're on the job we uh, we really depend on each other it's uh, total teamwork and it has to be it's a team sport you know firefighting is they are to me my family here it's one thing to see it in TV and movies as you grow up it's another thing to live it I would trust anybody here with my life I enjoy coming to work I enjoy seeing everybody here at the fire department I enjoy spending time with them it's not every day that you get to choose a job where you get to be with your friends and your family and get paid for it. That's what I get to do two shifts a week, every week.